In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two new stacks from GEPRC. We have an F4 variant and also an F7 variant here. Now, they do come with the flight controllers by themselves if you wanted to. So we're going to cover both of them as quick as possible because this is a really interesting setup due to the fact that they're so modular. They could either go analog or they can go digital as you please. Now, for the F7, I think they're calling it the span. This is called the Geb F722HD here. Now, don't let the HD fool you because this thing does still have an OSD board on board. So you could either run analog or you could run digital and still have the best of both worlds. And they also do provide you with a 9-volt regulator. Here, as you can tell, we have a barometer. We also have a USB Type-C for the connection here. And if we flip this guy over, we also do have black box memory logs. So if you're having issues, you could easily just log whatever you have. Now let's talk about the HD setup. To set this up is absolutely crazy simple. Here's the ESC connection. And this part right here is for the DJI unit here. For example, let's just talk about the full-fledged one, which they do provide you with the cable needed. Now, if you also did have the remote, this is the only connector you're only going to need. It setting up your quadcopter, which is insane. Basically just two plugs, one here, one here and you're done. And it goes the same for the F4 as well. Now, if we flip it over here, let's just say you're going to go the analog route. This is the area where you're going to have to play around with. This section right here is going to be for the video transmitter. As you can tell, we have ground 9 volt video output. T1, which is going to be used for your smart audio protocol, IRC tramp protocol. VB is, I think, battery voltage, and that just makes sense. But why would you do that when you have a 9 volt? So I highly recommend you go off of the 9 volt unless you needed something that needed uh, battery voltage, which I don't think you probably need. Now, another crazy feature on this board is we have two camera inputs, camera one, camera two, which is pretty crazy here. And we have a 5 volt in ground. And here, just in the middle of both of them, we have motor five output. So you could probably reroute this or resource remap this to whatever you want. Um, it's up to you what you do there. Now, looking at the section right here, which theoretically would be onto the right, this area right here is kind of meant or dedicated for some sort of a GPS setup. Because you can see we have the five volt, we have the ground, we have the I2C protocols, and we also have another UART here uh, if you wanted to use that for a GPS, which is really nice, very thoughtful as well. Now, if you wanted to set up your receiver, I'm guessing your receiver section is going to be here and it makes a lot of sense because we have ground 5 volt R2 T2. So TBS Crossfire would go here, then you have SBUS or IBUS would go here, and then there's the power for that. Below we have an RSSI, which again uh, confirms my thought about this area being for the receiver. And here we have another R2 for some reason, I have no idea, but maybe if you're going to do a 3.3 volt in the ground, something like a spectrum here, you also do have a 5 volt and two buzzer outputs, LEDs in ground, and that's about it. Now the ESC here isn't my favorite for some reason, I haven't personally noise tested this yet, but I will be noise testing it very soon. Uh, the ESC comes exactly identical on both. This seems to be like the iFlight budget design, which I'm not really a big fan of, and I have a video on that coming up very soon. Um, so this is rated up to 50 amps. Filtration looks absolutely minimal. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see when I test this out. So hopefully I could be proven wrong. Don't take my word for it just yet. But I don't like seeing, uh, a, you know, little to no filtration on these boards, especially when you're going to be running success or massive loads here or something that's going to be uh, doing a lot of work. Now for the accessories, I'll quickly just cover this one here. Uh, they're basically identical. Uh, you get the screws, you get the connector between the ESC and the flight controller. You also get an XT60. The capacitor, you must add. You must add. I'll tell you that right now. You have to add this thing. And you also just get your connector for your DJI setup here. I wished it was colored though. And why do I say that? Well, because if you're using a Cadex Vista, you're going to have to cut these off and solder directly. So uh, get Barcy, if you're watching, I wish you would color these. It would be much better for people. Reduces the chance of them making a mistake and frying out one of their components, either the flight controller or their Cadex Vista unit. Now, the F4 is basically almost identical. We're going to double check if it is, though. So we have onboard memory. This is an F4. We do have two regulators, a 5 and a 9 volt as well. Uh, this connector would be for the ESC. This connector would be for the DJI setup, which makes your life, again, super simple and super easy. They still kept the analog uh, on-screen display chip here. So if you wanted to run analog, you could do that without losing on-screen display. Now, if we look at the back side of the board here, we could see that this is the area for the video transmitter part. We have our ground 9 volt video output. So this would be the yellow line and a smart audio or IRC tramp protocol would be on TX2 here. Now for the camera input, we don't have dual cameras like the F7 here. But we do have a motor 5 output as well next to that area. The video input, this is where your camera would go. 
five volt and ground that's the power for your camera now if we take a look at this area right here this is the area or this corner right there is going to be for your s bus type receiver so we have ground five volt and s bus now again this is an f4 so make sure you connect it or connect your s bus right there that's where your signal would go here you have an extra tx6 rssi some more buzzers we have i think two buzzers or just basically one buzzer here leds ground and if you had IBUS or anything else that's not running SBUS inverted, then you're going to want to install it in this area, such as a Spectrum or IBUS. You have ground, 3.3 volt for Spectrum, but if you're using IBUS, you take the 5 volt from there. And the R3 would go for the uh, IBUS here, if you had IBUS uh, right there. And here we have another dedicated section. Theoretically, this is for your navigation system or GPS. Uh, you have I2C, and then you also have a UART and a 5 volt to power up your GPS if you're going to be doing that. We also do have a barometer right there, which is really nice. And again, we're using USB type C. The ESC is exactly identical to the other one, as well as the accessories here. You just get metal screws, a connector for the ESC, connector for the DJI unit. Again, I wish these were color coded here, but uh, I can't complain enough. And a low ESR capacitor, which I highly recommend you add. Please do not forget to add that. This ESC definitely seems to need it. And the testing results will show that in the upcoming days. So. Yeah, overall, these are nice little stacks. However, I don't know how much they go for. So definitely check the links down below. Those also do greatly support the channel. And don't forget to check out my FPV price comparison website, which actually parses every single FPV website. I'm adding more every other day and gets you the best price for whatever the hell you're looking for. So definitely check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.